I'm quite enjoying the Skinner. <laughs> Autonomous passwords. Here's the question that came in. I know that there are rigorous password rules for accounts in the autonomous database. But I've seen demos, et cetera, where the passwords were trivial. How is this possible? And I have to admit, I was skeptical when I saw this because I've had the same thing. You go to the autonomous database, you try to create a user and immediately get an error saying, you know, you've got to have 10,000 characters. It's going to have a symbol and a number and all sorts of stuff. You know, we're very rigorous when it comes to security on the autonomous database. And let's face it, a lot of us on our own playthings want to have, you know, Scott Tiger, you know, user Joe slash Joe, et cetera. But someone claims that they saw these trivial passwords, easy to hack passwords on the autonomous database. How is this possible? Is there a leak in the security rules? So I tinkered around for a bit and discovered something as to why this is possible, in fact, but it's actually a good thing. It actually solves heartache for you as customers. There isn't a leak in security. Let's do a demo to see how this is. Working. This is actually my own free autonomous database, one of the free forever databases. Uh, if you haven't got a free forever autonomous database, I thoroughly encourage you to get one. Literally go clouds.oracle.com slash free, sign up, and you get two autonomous databases, you know, exit out of hardware, you know, 20 gig of storage, CPU, I know, yeah, 20 gig of storage, you got a free database. On the autonomous database, if you're not familiar with it, the sys or system password, your administrator password is called admin. So I'm logged on as admin. Just to prove that the password rules are stringent, if I try to create a user called Scott2 identified by Tiger, it says, yep, I failed the mandatory profile. It has to be eight bytes. I think it has to have a new American. It has to have mixed case, et cetera, et cetera. So just simple proof there that you can't just use the you know, familiar old passwords. But I can do connect Scott slash Tiger to the same database. Yes, that password is you know, going to expire in a month's time, but that's true. So I could use a trivial password. What's going on? Now, I want to stress the Scott account doesn't come delivered for you in the autonomous database. So this is not some special account that they, because it's special, they give you the Scott slash Tiger. I had to create this in preparation for this demo. The question is, how did I do it given that I'm not allowed to use Tiger, but somehow I managed to get an account with Scott slash Tiger. I didn't hack the database. I didn't do anything like that. It's actually a facility we do to make life easier for you as customers. I've reconnected as admin. I'm going to drop that user. So Scott slash Tiger is now gone from my database. I'm now connecting to my local database, the one running on this machine here, DB19 PDB1, and I'm exporting the Scott schema. And as we know, it's just, I think, three or four tables. There we go. So I exported EMP, EMP2, DEMP, SARGRAY, et cetera. So I exported it to this here. So there's my full copy of my schema, my local database schema here on my local database which does have a password of Scott slash Tiger because I'm not running autonomous on my local database. Now, I won't, I won't run this command because it takes a while because this is how I would upload that dump file to my object store. So it actually, there's the bucket name. I'm running my free autonomous database out of Sydney, which is on the other side of Australia. It's the closest to me in terms of latency. And I would upload my scott.dump. And then what I can do is just import that. Even though I'm running it locally here from my own machine, I can do an import on the autonomous database where it picks up the file from the object store. Simply using the file name being the long dump file and using a credential, which lets the autonomous database reach out to the object store. I'm just got to remember my password now. So now I'm connected to my autonomous database up in the cloud and it's done. I took my local schema called Scott and I've imported it directly into the autonomous database. If I go look at DBA users for this new name I've just created. You can see it was created on the 17th of March, St. Patrick's Day. And it says the expiry date for my password is in one year's time. Now that's interesting. And that's the default. The default profile on Autonomous is you have, it looks at your expiry date and says they're all going to be one year from roughly today. But if I try alter that user and give it a simple password, it doesn't let me, right? However, I can give it a nice big long password and that's fine. So this is how it works. If you have a, what we would call an invalid password in a data pump file, this Scott schema, we will let you have that invalid password in terms of security rules. We'll let you keep it all the way into import. 
So I should have actually connected here to prove it to you. I could actually connect Scott slash Tiger to the database and it would tell me the password expires in 30 days. We're giving you 30 days of leeway to fix up this invalidly or not secure enough password. And that's what we do. We say, you've got a bad password here, rather than just blocking the import and saying, look, that user, we can't create that user because it doesn't meet the password rules. We'll keep that bad, bad password and we'll let you import the, the schema and we'll let you use the old password for 30 days. Within 30 days, you need to change it to something more sophisticated to make it more secure because we're on the autonomous database. It's actually a good thing, I think. It doesn't stop you from importing. It lets you import old style passwords and gives you 30 days of grace to actually get that thing sorted out in order for it to be legitimate on the autonomous database.